right, Lauren Shelley, are we ready to begin our webinar? Let's go. We're good to go. All right, great. Good evening and welcome to the City of Santa Rosa's community meeting to discuss Mendocino Avenue between 4th Street and College Avenue. I am Bjorn Griepenberg with the City of Santa Rosa and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel, which you can join by clicking on the interpretation icon resembling a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Before we begin the presentation, our host Lauren Wiley with the City of Santa Rosa and our translator Charles will explain how the meeting will work. La interpretación en vivo está disponible en el canal español. Puede unirse al canal de español por hacer clic en el icono de interpretación que parece un globo de raqueo en su barra de herramientas de Zoom, el cual parece en su pantalla. Thank you, Charles. As the community members join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the project webpage, srcity.org slash Mendocino Avenue after the meeting. At the end of the presentation, Bjorn will open up the meeting for public questions and comment. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, once again, I wanna thank you all for joining us tonight. Your participation and input are important to us as we discuss potential changes to Mendocino Avenue between 4th Street and College Avenue. Next slide, please, Lauren. We will start tonight's meeting with an overview of the agenda and topics we plan to cover in the presentation. We'll start by sharing more about the project, We'll share the vision for this section of Mendocino Avenue as detailed in city planning documents. We'll present preliminary concepts and discuss some trade-offs associated with each concept. We'll give a quick recap of a meeting we held last week with the Downtown Action Organization's Design and Improvement Committee. We'll share our project timeline, and then we'll have a couple of poll questions and go to public comment. Next slide, please. For tonight's discussion, we're focusing on Mendocino Avenue between 4th Street and College Avenue. The city plans to apply a slurry seal paving treatment on this stretch of Mendocino Avenue sometime in summer or fall of 2023. Paving projects present the best opportunity to consider changes to a roadways configuration since the road needs to be restriped anyhow. It's basically a blank canvas. Next slide, please. Here at the top, you'll see the typical existing configuration for most of this stretch of Mendocino Avenue with parallel parking on both sides, a single southbound lane and two northbound lanes. Traffic decreased on this stretch by an average of about 60% following the reunification of Old Courthouse Square. I should note that the after counts uh, we're providing um, are from 2019, so that's pre-pandemic data. Because of this decrease in traffic, staff recommends removing one of the two northbound lanes and repurposing that space for a different use. And that's why we're here tonight. We wanna to hear from you about how we should repurpose that space. I should note that this project will only address the roadway striping. Uh, the budget does not include elements like sidewalk widening or street trees, for example but we do wanna hear your creative and visionary ideas to help inform this project, as well as any future improvements to Mendocino Avenue. Next slide, please. Our planning documents give us options to consider for Mendocino Avenue. The city's downtown station area specific plan, which was adopted in 2020, gave direction to consider removing one of the two northbound lanes in order to install a center turn lane, angled parking, widened sidewalks, or other walking and bicycling improvements. Our bicycle and pedestrian master plan update adopted in 2019 identified this stretch of Mendocino Avenue as a class three shared bicycle route. To be clear, that is not a dedicated bicycle lane. That's a marked bike route where people on bikes share the lane with vehicle traffic. Next slide, please. The next few slides will provide some additional context to help inform how this project could impact or be impacted by bike improvements, parking utilization, 
and development projects. As guided by several city plans and policies, the city is working to improve mobility options downtown so that those who, are, who want to or are willing to walk, bike, and take transit can do so, helping to ease traffic congestion and leaving more parking for those who need to drive. Most notably, the city will be making bicycle and pedestrian improvements to Santa Rosa Avenue between 1st Street and Highway 12 starting this summer. We also have bike and scooter share systems launching this year, and those systems will enable people to rent electric bikes and scooters for short trips around town. Next slide, please. A 2019 study of downtown parking utilization found that the blocks between 5th and 7th, Street, 7th Streets were the highest utilized on this stretch of Mendocino Avenue at over 85%. The blocks north of 7th Street are a bit lower at 50 to 69%. There are just four spaces currently on the block between 4th and 5th Street, but each of the concepts we have developed and will present momentarily would add a handful of spaces on the southbound side, which currently does not have parking. Next slide, please. Lastly, there will be a considerable amount of development activity downtown, including two projects on this stretch of Mendocino Avenue shown here on the screen. These projects will obviously increase on street parking demand, but at the same time will also um, increase walking and bicycling activity downtown. Next slide, please. This slide illustrates the three options mentioned, uh, alluded to in the, in the downtown station area specific plan. As you can see, each option includes one travel lane in each direction, as well as on-street parking on both sides of the street. The first option would add a two-way center turn lane along the length of the corridor. The second option would add angled parking, presumably on the northbound or east side of the street due to more business activity. The third app option would add on-street bike lanes. And I want to be clear that uh, there, we're not limited to one of these three options. There could be other options, including hybrids that combine elements from multiple options shown here. Um, we're really just using this as a, a, as a starting point for our discussion. But we're hoping to hear your creative solutions and priorities for this important downtown street. Again, because this is a pavement maintenance project, we do not have budget to widen sidewalks or make any significant changes to the curbs. Our focus is really on the space between the curbs. Next slide, please. We'll now look at some design considerations and trade-offs between each of these concepts. Changing the parking to angled would trigger the need to add accessible spaces these would likely be added as parallel spaces near intersections as the city has done in other locations, such as 1st Street at A Street, which is shown uh, here. This would preclude parklets near intersections in some locations. Parklets, uh, which we'll be talking about a bit more tonight, are outdoor seating areas that are typically installed in the parking lane. And um, like I said, we'll, we'll touch a little bit more on parklets shortly. Next slide, please. I want to show how the concepts would be impacted by left turn lanes, which are recommended on Mendocino Avenue at the 5th Street and 7th Street intersection approaches. These two drawings are, are not to scale, um, they're just for illustrative purposes only. But uh, here at the top, you can see the angled park parking option. And uh, in that uh, drawing, you can see that parallel parking would be removed across the street from the angled, park angled parking to make room for the left turn lane. Um, so essentially for the length of the left turn lane, we would lose the parallel parking on the opposite side of the street from the angled. In the bike lane option shown below, uh, something similar happens. We show parallel parking here being removed on both sides for the length of the, uh, for the, length of the left turn lane. In both cases, we expect the left turn lanes to occupy up to about 100 feet, which, is, which comes out to roughly four or five parallel parking spaces. Um, I do, the bike lane option could preserve parking on one side, but this would result in narrower bike lanes, which we'll show on the next slide. Next slide, please, Lauren. So this slide shows the two different versions of the bike lane concept where left turns are proposed again at the 5th and 7th Street uh, intersection approaches. 
So at the top there, you can see if parking is provided on one side of the street for the length of the left turn lane, the bike lanes would be narrower, about five feet wide. And then on the bottom there, you can see that if parking were prohibited on both sides for the length of the left turn lane, we would have enough width to provide um, wider buffered bike lanes. Next slide, please. This table shows the estimated number of parking spaces that would be provided under each option, as well as the change compared to the existing parking supply and uh, any impacts on parklets. So there are currently 86 parallel parking spaces on this stretch of Mendocino Avenue, as well as a handful of commercial and passenger loading zones. The angled parking option would result in 100 20 to 130 parking spaces for an increase in 34 to 40, 34 to 44 spaces, excuse me. This estimate is definitely, it's rough, it's subject to change um, depending on the angle that we use, uh, sight distance at driveways and intersections, accessible space requirements and compatibility with some of those um, commercial and passenger loading zones. So that number is definitely subject to change uh, as we get further into a more detailed design. The center turn lane option would result in an increase of 15 parking spaces and not require any parking prohibition at the intersection approaches. The bike lane option with parking on one side at the left turn lanes is not expected to increase or decrease the overall parking supply. And that's because we're able to actually add parking on the southbound side in a couple of locations where parking currently doesn't exist, offsetting any parking loss that uh, would, would happen at the left turn lanes. Lastly, the bike lane option with no parking at the left turn lanes would result in a reduction of about 14 spaces uh, throughout the corridor. Next slide, please. We presented to the Downtown Action Organization's Design and Improvement Committee last week, and their group um, emphasized the importance of allowing as many businesses as possible the option to install parklets. They supported bike improvements, and they believed the center turn lane option offered little benefit throughout most of the corridor since there are very few opportunities to actually turn left uh, throughout most of the corridor with the exception of the interceptions, intersections, excuse me. Next slide, please. So we are tackling the community engagement for this project in, in two phases. In the first, between May and the end of July, we are seeking your input as we identify and develop uh, recommended concepts. Following tonight's meeting, we encourage you to take our online survey, which will be posted at srcity.org slash Mendocino Avenue. And that survey will be open until June 30th. Later this week, we will present to the city's Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Board at their regular meeting this Thursday, May 19th. And then in August and September, we will present our survey results and the recommended design to the Downtown Subcommittee, Downtown Action Organization, and the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Board. We're hoping to finalize the design by January of 2023. Uh, as I noted earlier, the striping changes would be implemented following the slurry seal application sometime in summer or fall of 2023. And for more information and to sign up for project updates, you can go to the URL on your screen, srcity.org slash Mendocino Avenue. Next slide, please. So we recognize the importance of this corridor for those who live in, work in, and visit downtown Santa Rosa, and we expect to hear a variety of perspectives and priorities from the community tonight. Um, so before we open public comment, we'd like to know a little bit more about uh, who's in the room. And so we've prepared a couple of poll questions that should, um, should appear on your screen. And I hope Lauren or Shelly, I'm hoping you're able to, to launch those. There we go. Sorry, my, my poll questions disappeared. I don't know if, are they still? Okay, there they are. So 
sorry, and I'm I'm seeing that it says select up to three in question number two, but if it's multiple choice, you'll only be able to select one. So I suppose we'll ask uh, to choose your top priority rather than your top three, please. Thank you, and, and sorry for the confusion. Hopefully everyone's wrapping up their responses. And then I'll ask Lauren or Shelly to, um, to show the results. We'll give it about another 30 seconds or so. Great, thank you. Okay, looks like everybody's had a chance. I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and show the results. All right, great. Thank you, Shelley. And thank you everyone for taking our poll questions. So it looks like the majority of our attendees tonight, 64% um, visit downtown. We do have uh, four folks who own or manage a business on this stretch of Mendocino Avenue. Uh, one person who owns a business elsewhere downtown. We've got 16 people who work downtown and eight people who live downtown. And then as far as the top priorities, again, sorry, sorry that you couldn't select up to three. I'm sure most many of you would have selected multiple priorities. Um, we have 66% who chose bicycling as their top priority. 45% um, who chose walking, 41% who chose parklets, 25% who chose parking, and 11% who chose traffic circulation. Um, so like I, like I said, great to have a, a variety of um, perspectives and, and priorities uh, from the community. Thank you. Uh, Lauren, I think we can go to the next slide. So at this time, we would like to hear from you, our community. So we will now move on to the um, uh, public comment or even question and answer portion of the meeting. However, before I begin, I will ask Lauren to review how you can participate by asking uh, live questions and, uh, and uh, giving your comments. Thank you, Bjorn. Once Bjorn calls for public questions or comments, we will announce for everyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. We will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. Your microphone will be unmuted so you may ask your question. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted so our panelists may respond to your question. Great, thank you, Lauren. Shelley, are we ready for the first meeting attendee to, um, to ask their question or provide a comment? Yes, we are, thank you, Bjorn. Uh, just a reminder, if you need to have your question translated, please let us know once you've been called on, and then please allow us to, a moment to confirm that the translator is ready. 
Please remember to speak slower so our translation team can relay your question. Anyone wishing to ask a question or make a comment may do so by raising your hand using the Zoom raise hand feature and you will be called in order as they show up on our screen. Again, if you're calling in on phone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. The first person in the queue, I'll call in you just a moment, just a reminder, there is Q and A's showing up. You can type your question if you cannot speak. Um, those will be answered at the end of our live, and, uh, live uh, hand feature. Okay, so the first person in our queue is Sarah. Sarah, we're gonna ask you to unmute. Sarah. Hi, I'm here. I was okay. trying to find out the unmute. Thank Hi, you. Um, so I have a com question and a comment. Um, so I'd really like to see the bike lanes more protected than what you have pictured in your um, drawings uh, with a um, maybe a three foot buffer zone between the bike lanes and the cars, um, similar to what's done on Summerfield. And then um, I would like to know how this section of bike route is going to tie into the other bike routes in the city. So um, we're currently planning on getting a bike bridge over um, the 101 freeway, and it's going to come down into Santa Rosa Junior College and out onto Mendocino. And I'd like to know how these bike lanes are going to get built so that they connect with that um, kind of uh, routes through the city so we have continuous bike routes throughout the city. Thank you. Great, thank you, Sarah. Um, to your first question about uh, whether it would be possible to add um, some sort of uh, buffer or protection to these bike lanes, um, given the, the width of the roadway, uh, doing so would require eliminating parking on one side of the street. Um, we don't have enough width uh, as it stands to provide uh, two travel lanes, two bike lanes, and two parking lanes uh, in each direction um, with any sort of, uh, we have no room left to give with, with, uh, with all of those uses. So with the elimination of parking, we, we could achieve buffered or protected bike lanes. To your um, second question about how this ties into the, the bicycle network, um, so Mendocino Avenue, as I mentioned, uh, in our in our bicycle and pedestrian master plan, which really is the that's the blueprint for our city's bike network, it proposes uh, this stretch of Mendocino Avenue as a class three or shared uh, bike route, and um, its its role in the network is essentially linking existing class two lanes on Santa Rosa Avenue south of um, south of Courthouse Square to uh, class two lanes. On, uh, on Mendocino Avenue, north of College Avenue. Um, however, from my knowledge of, of kind of how people use our current network, the, the more popular north-south bike route um, north of downtown is, is the Humboldt Street Bike Boulevard. Uh, that being said, we one of the reasons we are, uh, you know, pitching the idea of bike lanes on this stretch of Mendocino is there is a considerable amount of business activity. And we know that um, people, would probably like to um, uh, visit some of those businesses by uh, by bike or by scooter, and um, and so I think we we envision Mendocino Avenue by the bike lanes or bike route on Mendocino Avenue as being less of a uh, a cross town or regional connection and more of a local connection serving those um, businesses and residences along Mendocino Avenue, with Humboldt Street uh, serving as more of the uh, the through connection for nor for lo longer trips. All right, thank you. Our next speaker is Eris. Thank you, this is Eris Weaver, Executive Director of the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. And given the location of our office, I ride and walk this stretch multiple times every weekday. Um, so I have a lot of thoughts about it. Um, I'll start with the ones that are relevant to, to the striping, but I do have some others that don't fall in that category that can just go into the hopper for another time. Um, ever since the, um, the square was reunited and the traffic is down, I 
most of the time riding that stretch see lots of empty parking. Um, I, echoing um, Ms. Jones's comment, would much prefer to see protected bike lanes than class two bike lanes, but I think even class two bike lanes would be preferable over the class three, which I'm not a big fan of anyway, which doesn't really change anything about what the road already is. I already ride in taking up the whole right lane since there is no bike lane. However, I sometimes am uh, get nastiness from drivers um, because I'm taking that lane, even though they have another lane, because what they see is empty parking spots to the right of me. And there is, um, I think, a misconception that, well, I should be riding over there, even though the, the vehicle code says I'm a vehicle. And so I should ride in a vehicle lane and not in a parking lane. So I think uh, adding a bike lane of some sort um, would be uh, useful for both drivers and cyclists. I also think um, having a bike lane um, can uh, connecting the previous, the, both the north and the south lanes, makes for something that's continuous. It's one of my biggest frustrations is when bike lanes come and go, and people get confused, and they don't know where to go. But as I said, I would prefer there being a buffering, and I think getting rid of parking on at least one side of the street um, would be reasonable, given how much of that parking is not used much of the time. Um, a couple of my other thoughts that are less related to the striping that can just go in the hopper for when we can look at other things on that street, um, because I do walk there a lot, is a necessity to um, fix and potentially widen the sidewalks. They are in really bad shape, and in many areas, there is a lot of other stuff encroaching on the actual walking space. Uh, and I, there are some stretches where I'm not sure how easy it would be for someone with a stroller or a wheelchair to get through. Um, and then there are some places where there are businesses that spill out into the sidewalk, which then makes it a little harder to walk through. So my dream uh, version would be to widen um, and make the sidewalks a little pleasanter. Uh, another thing that I would like to see is some attention to the traffic signals along this stretch. Some of them, for example, if I come down 10th Street to turn left onto northbound Mendocino and I come from the train station, uh, that signal never recognizes my bike. I sit right on that little bike logo on the pavement and it does not see me. So I either have to go press the beg button or if there is no traffic, just blow through the red light. It, and some of the other ones are a challenge as well. And of course, crossing at College in Mendocino is taking your life into your hands. I've been almost uh, hit and see cars uh, run that red light every single day. My final comment has to do with bike parking in that area. There are some businesses that have a fair bit of um, people in and out. Um, for example, I get my morning coffee at Crooks and there is no place to park a bike anywhere along that whole stretch. So I end up bringing my bike right into the coffee shop, uh, which hopefully doesn't annoy anybody too much because they haven't told me not to. Um, but having some uh, bike racks along that whole stretch near where some of the businesses are could be a really nice thing. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Eris. I do want to um, just reply to a couple of, of um, issues that you raised. Um, with uh, As far as uh, traffic signal detection goes, uh, we do have, uh, I do want to um, let people know about My Santa Rosa. That's our, uh, our uh, internet application which through which you can report uh, issues like that one and um, and notify the city and uh, it's uh, so we want people to, to use that whenever possible the URL for that is srcity.org slash my Santa Rosa and it has a map you can click on the the spot where you've uh, where the issue exists and then you can choose the category in that case it would be you know traffic signal issue and um, and our teams will, will get right on it. Uh, we also have um, on the city's walking and bicycling webpage a form to request a bike rack, and so we, uh, the city actually has uh, just secured a grant to purchase and install 100 bicycle racks throughout downtown, um, probably next year, I, I want to say as early as uh, early 2023, and so um, that's another way to let us know where you'd like to see bike racks installed in the public right of way. 
All right, thank you. Thanks again, Eris. Um, Shelly, are we ready for our next uh, question or comment? Yes, thank you. And just uh, one reminder to slow your pace when you're speaking so that the translators can keep up and translate that appropriately for us. All right, our next speaker is going to be Alexa. Alexa. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Um, so thank you for the presentation and for the opportunity to contribute my perspective on the future of this stretch of Mendocino. I'm going to try to be slow for the translators. It's a problem I have, sorry. I live with my husband and two sons in the Montgomery Village area of Santa Rosa, and I work at the junior college. And I regularly patronize many of the businesses along this stretch of Mendocino, including Ritual Hair Salon, CoLab Co-working Space, Crooks Coffee, Three Disciples Brewing Company, and Trek. My kids are huge fans of the Outer Plains Comics and Games Store, and my family has attended many community events at the Glazer Center. We most often use our car to access these businesses and venues because we do not feel like it is safe and effective. There's a safe and effective way to ride our bikes. And in fact, the few times we have tried to ride, our experiences have been frustrating at best and dangerous at worst. But we would prefer to use our bikes. That would be our preference. So I'm here to ask you on behalf of my family to make the changes necessary to make us feel welcome and safe while on our bar bikes in this part of town. Um, and none of the three options that you've presented as starting points will do so. Uh, the bike lanes that you are proposing in the third art option are research shows only likely to be used by two to 3% of the population deemed the fearless. Um, and I, would, I wouldn't use them or feel safe letting my, my kids ride on them. So uh, we would prefer protected bike infrastructure and that attracts bicycle riders of all ages and abilities. I'd also like to reassure any representatives of the businesses along this stretch who happen to be listening in that my family is more likely to visit your establishments if we can do so safely on our bikes. And research shows that we are not alone. Robust bike infrastructure has been shown to have a positive or neutral effect on businesses in the areas of town in which it is installed. So I hope the planners are uh, taking that research into account and that any businesses um, that are represented on this call will support the city in making bold investments in truly multimodal downtown um, transportation. Finally, as someone who works at the JC, I would love to be able to ride from my office at the JC to downtown um, for meals, shopping and events. Uh, protected bike lanes along the stretch will provide a missing link between the Humboldt Bicycle Avenue and Courthouse Square. So I hope the city can draft a fourth option that reflects genuinely protected bike infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you, Alexa. And Lauren, I'm wondering, would it be helpful? I know we probably want to leave this slide up to um, uh, so people know how to participate, but I'm wondering if it would be helpful at some point to um, just leave the presentation on slide 10, which shows the concepts and just for discussion purposes. I will make it so. Great. Thank you very much, Lauren. All right, Shelley, are we ready for our next um, commenter? Yes, our next hand is Joel. There we go. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. All right. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for putting on this presentation, by the way. Um, and I know how uh, difficult sometimes public forums can be um, as far as getting uh, feedback. Uh, so I do appreciate um, you guys uh, willing to, to take the time to, to listen to us. Um, I uh, do live in the downtown area, and uh, this area is uh, uh, very much a, a boon area for myself as well. Um, I frequent Crook's Coffee probably every single day, um, including on the weekends. Um, and I will say that uh, I, I believe that the stretch of road uh, definitely could be uh, severely improved. So I do appreciate uh, the change to it. Um, my personal recommendation, and I believe I'm hearing this from a lot of the other attendees uh, that have already spoken, is that it, it feels like uh, there probably needs to be more 
uh, of an expansion um, than what is being uh, recommended here. Um, and uh, my thoughts have already been pretty echoed from this uh, that I've thought about throughout the week. And um, I would like to present as the fourth solution that some people have been mentioning um, that um, we maybe consider the idea of closing a good majority of the street down uh, for uh, cars entirely. Um, I believe this would make a large area uh, walkable for a lot of people, bikeable, uh, safe. Uh, you would basically be uh, providing the amenity that almost everybody seems to want. That includes businesses being able to put areas on the sidewalk and on the street um, that would allow them to open up areas outdoors. It would allow people to be walkable um, across the street without having to worry um, spaces for bikes to actually be placed or other electric vehicles, uh, small, you know, pedestrian electric vehicles. Um, and I believe that a lot of this could easily be achieved by simply closing down, um, effectively where the cars kind of get into the area of the College Avenue area, uh, if you go up north on the map. Um, and you could funnel pretty much all the major traffic through the Healdsburg Avenue uh, section. Um, since we've already known uh, that the throughway, uh, since the dividing of the courthouse square, uh, has definitely limited traffic heavily in that area, uh, it would definitely uh, behoove that uh, closure of the area and it really wouldn't seem to impact traffic all that much based on the uh, projections that we've already seen. Um, coming up with another projection as well that I think that would be really viable for closing the street down up to the College Avenue area would actually be because if we take a look at the uh, parking um, uh, report that came out, I believe it was about two weeks ago, uh, the analysis reported that almost every single parking garage on almost any single event and time in all of Santa Rosa, this includes weekends, events, and weekdays, and week weekday nights, uh, is almost always at a 50% capacity, if not lower, uh, as a very common stay. I believe there's only one parking garage that ever goes above that. Um, and one of the biggest ones uh, that I have noted is the parking garage that is over by Outer Plains on 7th Street uh, is uh, pretty much below 50% uh, all of the time, like all of the time. And that is an area right next to Mendocino Avenue. If we were to funnel that traffic away from the Mendocino Avenue area uh, and allow anybody who wants to come into the downtown through a carway, they would you know, be able to park at that parking and make that parking more viable, which would also eliminate the need or requirement to even add any cars or parking for Mendocino. And that again, would allow for more walkable area, more bikeable area and more space for uh, businesses to uh, utilize that space in a more friendly and friendly way. Uh, thank you. Great, thank you, Joel. Shelly, ready for our next hand? Yeah, our next speaker will be Adrian. Great, hi there, can you hear me fine? We can, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Adrian Covert. I'm a West End resident and rep, uh, lead for Santa Rosa Yimby. You know, I live in the West End. I ride down Mendocino often on my bike with my wife and our toddler. Um, a bike lane without a physical barrier is not a bike lane. Uh, cars will violate the space unless you put up the barrier and it makes it unsafe and it makes it biking unpleasant. Um, barriers are needed to protect the cyclists. And according to the Santa Rosa Police Department, cars have killed 55 people and injured nearly 9,000 people in Santa Rosa since 2012. And nearly half of those deaths were just pedestrians or cyclists, so people not even in cars. So when you are riding alongside traffic, uh, it, it creates a very unsafe and unpleasant experience. This is something that I think this city could really has an opportunity to improve upon. 
and redesigning Mendocino is a, an excellent opportunity to really connect downtown with some good bike infrastructure. Now, when it comes to what would have to be sacrificed, consider this, that 25% of the downtown surface area is already committed to parking infrastructure. And as the previous speaker mentioned, most of it is unused. The city's pre-COVID parking analysis by Walker Consultants found that over half of the city's parking spaces go unused on a typical busy day. That is a lot of wasted space. So I think at the very least, we should be talking about eliminating the 14 parking spots to make room for protected bike lanes um, with bollards uh, or a, a sturdier barrier. Doing so would sacrifice less than one fifth of 1% of the downtown parking capacity. So that is a very small sacrifice to make a big boost in uh, bikeability. But if we really wanted a big win for the city, I agree with the previous speaker that we should be talking about opening this space up exclusively to pedestrians and cyclists and creating a public space unlike any other in the region. Thank you. Great, thank you, Adrian. Shelly, ready for our next hand? I am. Uh, Dick, you'll be our next speaker. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Dick Carlisle, a retired urban planner and civil engineer. And being involved with Courthouse Square Design, I knew someday this was going to come up about reimagining what could happen with Mendocino Avenue. And voila, it's here. Thank you very much for carrying this forward because I'm going to take a different bent on this. Um, I know the emphasis has been on bike lanes and bicycles, which I feel is very important, but I want to step back and look at the big picture. Um, we have a gateway at College Avenue and we have Courthouse Square at the other end. And what we need to do is make this space very interesting. Now, there's been a lot of good comments about, you know, eliminating some of the traffic and really making this a people place. Um, but let's look at the big picture. When you, when you look at cities in Europe, they're all about terminated vistas. We've got an opportunity at each end of this Mendocino Avenue to have terminated vistas. We can bring back some of the history of the arch that was right there near 4th Street that said Redwood Empire, and it would frame the new artwork that will be in Courthouse Square. And at the other end, we could have something that would really stand out so that you had terminated vistas at each end of this street to really make it interesting. It makes it stand out from just another city street, Main Street. So let's look at the big picture here. And, uh, you know, in so many urban planning documents, and I know bicycle lanes are, are important, but when you take a city street like this and make it a skinny street, and you provide the parking and you slow down, what you wanna do is really narrow that down so anybody going down there, whether you're on a bike or on a car, it's very slow, very pedestrian friendly, very bike friendly, but you know, eliminating parking is not the answer. You need that, that edge to slow the traffic down. If you eliminate any parking and have uh, just, it becomes thoroughfare. And is there any way we can really look at bicycles being safe on Humboldt and coming up that way and feeding this with the side streets with bicycles and having good bicycle parking at each intersection 
And um, anyway, that's just a few of my, I missed some of the earlier. I'm, I'm assuming you're not changing any of the curb width or anything, and you're just redefining what's, what's going on here. Now, as far as left turn lanes and turn lanes, perhaps you should look at some small, well-designed traffic circles at the intersection that could allow the traffic to slow down, turn, and make left turn lanes. If they're well-designed, it could be part of the whole impact of the street design. And of course, the other thing is bringing in, to make the street interesting, bringing in the street lights, uh, colored ba uh, flower baskets, well-designed uh, and comfortable benches for seating. Um, there, there are so many things that we can do to enhance this street, to make it interesting for people to, to walk, whether you're on a bike, a car, or walking. And with emphasis on really walking, because it, it could be, and like I say, having the gateways at both ends and terminated vistas will really define it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Th thank you, Dick. And I do, I do want to um, uh, reiterate for any of those of you who maybe have joined us uh, since the presentation started. Uh, this project will only impact the existing roadbed. It's uh, these these improvements we're looking at are our striping changes, um, which will be delivered because which we're enabled to do because we're uh, planning to apply a slurry seal pavement overlay uh, sometime next summer or fall. Um, so while we can't make any changes to the sidewalks as part of this project or install any other um, streetscape amenities as part of this project, uh, we are still interested in hearing those ideas, as you shared, Dick, um, uh, to help inform future improvements on, on Mendocino Avenue. Um, Shelley, we did get a request in our in our Q&A to when you announce the next speaker to announce uh, the person who's on deck, if, if you can do that, please. Thanks. Thank you. So our next speaker will be Kathy and Jenny will be on deck. Go ahead, Kathy. Kathy, I'm trying to unmute you. Are you getting a message to unmute? Okay, we're going to move to Jenny. Jenny, we're going to unmute you. Hi. Yes, so my name is um, Jenny Bard. Thank you for this um, invitation to the public to provide input. And um, I am a longtime resident of the JC neighborhood. Um, I live now in the Luther Burbank Gardens neighborhood, and I uh, I'm a frequent traveler on my bicycle heading north and south, many different ways and, um, and through the downtown. And I was struck by Dick Carlisle's um, emphasis on reimagining what could be for Mendocino Avenue. And I totally agree with that. I, if for those of you who don't know, I was very involved in developing a vision for Mendocino Avenue from Steel Lane to College Avenue. Um, we brought in a walkability expert, Dan Burden, who involved, uh, we, we were able to involve our neighborhoods, the city, uh, the fire department, the police, everybody, schools. The mute button is now appearing. And uh, to, to create a vision for what a real walkable, bikeable Mendocino Avenue could look like. Sorry, Shelly, it appears Jenny was just muted. I don't know if that was, didn't sound like she, she had finished her comment oh, yet. But yeah, I'm sorry, that was my fault, sorry. Okay, so anyway, I'm not sure where I left off, but um, the reimagining what Mendocino Avenue could be is, is is really important. And I have thought a lot about this and I'm very interested in all of the comments that have been made about actually um, taking away the cars on Mendocino Avenue all the way down to Courthouse Square from college uh, because there is an alternative that goes along Hillsburg Avenue to B Street. 
um, and then allowing the bicycles to really have a dedicated place because they do not really have that anywhere in the city. They have we have Humboldt Bike Boulevard, but when you get to College Avenue, uh, you have to wait up to a minute to cross. So it's not really suitable for really prioritizing bicycles. Um, and then when you get down into the downtown, um, you get to Third Street and you have to take the lane and um, it's a little nerve wracking for people who are not comfortable doing that and riding with cars. So nowhere in our city do we have a completely dedicated uh, north-south route for bicycles. And I, believe, I agree with, with others that this really is needed. Even on Hillsburg Avenue to B Street, yes, there's a bicycle path and that tends to be the way I go if I'm on Mendocino Avenue heading south, but it also gets scary at Third Street because the bike lane ends and uh, you have to merge with traffic there in a very, very dense um, traffic corridor. So um, I would like to also uh, request that the city really look at considering and prioritizing the bicycle for Mendocino Avenue. Um, and also just to ask that you uh, maybe discuss what is in the future for continuous bicycle lanes um, along Santa Rosa Avenue. So once you get onto the other side of the courthouse square, um, having a, a, a dedicated bike path all the way to um, uh, on, on where Santa Rosa Avenue comes into Third Street and heading down to uh, Bennett Valley Road. I believe the bike lanes are going to be added there, but that these be um, the most, you know, whatever infrastructure improvements can be included to make those uh, safe and as protected as possible. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Okay, our next speaker, we're going to try Kathy again. Kathy? And then Esther will follow. Kathy, can you unmute? I'm trying. Okay, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, first, one comment on your automatic transcription. There's a lot of truth in it that's unexpected. <laughs> Mendocino Avenue is described as menace and Humboldt Street as humble, <laughs> which is kind of appropriate, but I'm speaking as a pedestrian. Um, Just very quickly, I'll clarify, the slower you speak, the more accurate it becomes, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um, experience of a pedestrian on Mendocino Avenue now is kind of difficult because there are, especially teenagers, um, when they're trying to ride bikes down the Mendocino, they will ride on the sidewalk because it's, it's just too dangerous to ride on Mendocino Avenue. So as a pedestrian, I'm happy to yield to them, but that shouldn't be happening, period. Um, and then uh, the parklets. The parklets have been blocking the sidewalk and I've had to walk out into the traffic lanes just to walk down Mendocino Avenue. Uh, one other thing that I see is out of the scope of this, but you might wanna consider for the future is the HVAC exhaust from the Rosenberg building that blows out onto the sidewalk and it, the air is foul and I just don't walk that block. So I, I don't know why you have to give so much space to parking as um, someone pointed out earlier. Um, there's plenty of park parking just off Mendocino Avenue and making the streets safer for bicycles would also make it safer for pedestrians. Thank you. Great, thank, thank you, Kathy. thank you, Kathy. 
Okay, Esther, we're going to ask you to unmute. Sorry, Bjorn. And then we'll be followed by Brad. Hi. Um, I live in uh, between 10th and 7th Street. And the traffic on Mendocino is horrific. I own a business. So my business is downstairs and I live upstairs. And the young kids with their hot rods race up and down Mendocino. And it's very unsafe. <clears throat> but I do agree with, with Dick and that we cannot lose any parking because I have clients that come and they do not want to park in the garage because they don't feel safe in the garages. So they want to be able to park out front. So I don't think that's a solution to get rid of parking, especially since I've noticed there's a lot of building going on, new apartments and things going, you know, high rise buildings. I don't think that would be a good idea. We had a sideshow down here a few months back that lasted from 12 a.m. To, to 3 a.m. in the morning. They had fireworks going off on the building next door to me. I called the police several times. Nobody ever came down here to do anything. They just continued the sideshow right in the middle of 7th Street. And every night, and even during the day, they raced down Mendocino going probably 50 miles an hour. The, it, the, the motorcycles and the cars are so loud, they, they make the horns go off on all the cars. So the horns are going off and this loud, loud noise. And it's hard. I like to leave my door open so that I can you know, have fresh air and I have to close it because they're racing their cars up and down Mendocino. So I don't, I don't ride bikes. So I'm not going to say anything about the bike thing, but um, I was thinking maybe if they put in speed bumps and don't take away the parking, put in speed bumps. So you cannot race down Mendocino Avenue from college all the way to, to fourth street. So that's just, you know, my opinion. I don't, I'm not a city planner or anything like that, but I just live down here and I've lived down here since we've had the business since 2018, but I've lived here since 2019. And it's just even in the daytime. And then even in the garage, you'll hear them racing down in the garage, but I just hate to see the, any parking spaces being lost in the front because that's where a lot of clients like to park. Thank you, Esther. And I, I do want to um, mention that with, with all of our designs uh, proposed configurations here uh, and with eliminating one of the two northbound travel lanes, we do expect uh, there to be some traffic calming benefits uh, since basically people will now be stuck behind uh, the car in front of them, right? There won't be any opportunity to, to pass um, in a second northbound lane as there is currently. Um, so hopefully that should help alleviate some of those issues. I do want to um, give an opportunity, opportunity to Rob Sprinkle, who is our uh, Deputy Director of Traffic Engineering, to chime in if he has any additional comments about that or, um, or speed bumps. Thanks, Bjorn. Um, yeah, I think I, I would have said exactly what you said regarding the traffic calming and the um, benefits of reducing the, the travel lanes and also reducing the widths of the lanes down to I think 11 feet. Um, we do have bus routes that do go on the section of, of the street uh, north of 10th and I don't believe they come down south of 10th but that would be um, one thing that we have to consider in installation of, of speed humps. The other thing is um, our fire and emergency response ability. Those all have to be vetted through uh, those channels prior to any type of installation. Um, my preference, I think, would be to, to um, you know, if we, if we go with installation of the single lane in each direction and maybe even with some of the uh, traffic circles in the future and those types of traffic calming uh, measures, I don't think the speed bumps actually would, I don't think we need them at that point anymore. I think, I think we'd probably address the majority of um, any of the speeding issues that would be, that would result. So um, thanks, Bern. Thank you, Rob. All right, thank you, Brad. You're gonna be next, followed by Peter. Yeah, thank you. This is uh, Brad Hevner. Uh, thanks very much for holding this meeting for all your work on this. Um, I live in Santa Rosa and I work downtown. I have an office in the Upton building uh, at the corner of Fifth and Mendocino. I'm on the third floor there, uh, sort of looking down on the Puerto Rican restaurant across the street. And I couldn't agree with Esther more, it, the noise. And, and, and uh, Rob and Bjorn, I, I'm not convinced really that, that narrower lanes and a single lane is gonna do the trick. 
Um, you know, people strut their cars downtown. They go slowly down Fourth Street, sort of showing off their car, and then they turn the corner and take. If there's a green light, they punch it right then, or if it's a red light at fifth, they'll go up and wait for the light and then punch it there. And there's not enough traffic. They won't be stuck behind another car. Most of the time, there is not another car. And those, those drivers are just looking to make noise. This is, this is you know, what, what they're doing. And they're going to take the opportunity, even with a single 11-foot lane, as long as there's not a car in front of them, and uh, be really disruptive to downtown businesses. So, you know, I, like many people, I'm on Zoom meetings all day. I feel really lucky to be able to sit in my downtown Santa Rosa office and have meetings with people all over California, including appearances before judges and, and presentations to a lot of people. And I like having downtown be my, my, my downtown Santa Rosa being the place I, I do all that from. But I'm now looking for another office because I'm in the middle of these meetings and speaking it was a lot of people listening and there's this roar of a car and it's so disruptive i can't stay there with that kind of noise um and uh so i i don't know if it's a slightly elevated crosswalk type of calming or speed bump or something but i think more really needs to be done on that um on i also bike uh most of the time to and from the office um and I live to the north, so Humboldt is a north-south corridor, but just my specific way that I go to get on to Humboldt, if you're not, don't want to deal with fourth, and then fifth, you go over and it's a left turn across traffic, and so that's better to avoid. I'll go up Mendocino to seventh before I get over to, to Humboldt, and then you're, you're turning left at the four-way stop sign. So that stretch between fifth and seventh is key to be able to ride comfortably on Mendocino Avenue. Um, and uh, I think you said at the beginning that the base plan was just Sharrows and not even a striped bike lane. I think that would be a huge uh, disappointment um, because you, you, you really want to feel safe on a bicycle going, uh, for me, especially on that, on that one stretch. Um, so I think, you know, the vision for downtown becoming more and more walkable outdoor people outdoor going slowly it's 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 a great vision and we can do that but it's not made for cars it's not made for for you know moving vehicles speedily and slow slow driving is just fine for that for that vision of the future so thanks very much thank you brad peter we're going to go ahead and ask you to unmute and you will be followed by Colin Thomas. Hi, Bjorn, and my name is Peter Stanley. Um, I have an architecture and planning firm actually, right? We're in, we have an office in the CoLab building, which is on the ground floor of the Press Democrat. Plus, we're the ones, the image you showed at the corner of Riley and Mendocino, we're the planning um, consultants for that eight story building. and. I'm going to echo a lot of what I heard in the beginning of um, this presentation, or at least the the public presentation of, you know, reimagining Mendocino Avenue, at least this stretch. And Jenny, I'm glad you brought up the the north of College Avenue stretch because the notion that men that Humboldt has become the north south um, bicycle transportation corridor is because Mendocino hasn't been developed into what it could be. And I think a reimagining of this downtown has to take into account that everything that I've heard, even those who are saying don't take away parking, um, is reimagining this as more of a bicycle and pedestrian corridor. We have 112 units that are going to go in at the corner of Mendocino and Riley, and we are reimagining Riley as a more pedestrian and bicycle friendly little corridor there. There's only nine parking spaces that are gonna be in our building and they're gonna be a car share program. So we're not intending to bring a lot of cars down into Mendocino Avenue. And I think the elimination of parking is not a bad thing. Um, we have a pretty robust parking infrastructure in Santa Rosa um, between the parking garages and the lots themselves. Um, we just purchased the lot at the corner of 
Riley and B Street from the city of Santa Rosa. But when we develop that site, we're going to put all that parking back in. So the parking isn't getting eliminated, it's getting rerouted in different ways. Mendocino is, it is a horrendous section of the road now. I, I, I even now with the reduced amount of traffic, um, it still feels unsafe at times to go through there. And so if we're gonna reimagine it, and I realize we can't put a lot of the infrastructure for the protected bike lanes in there, but we can, we can plan for that in the future when maybe we have infrastructure finance money that would allow us to start doing some of these street improvements that are more about the infrastructure rather than the striping. Um, I don't think diagonal parking is a solution. Um, it creates dangerous situations for people on bikes when people are just pulling out of diagonal parking. I think parallel parking and reduced parallel parking with parklets and wider bike lanes along Mendocino Avenue. We don't need more than two lanes down there. And if we eliminate some of this parking reason to come down there, then what happens is it gets backfilled by people who walk and people who bike. When Alexa said she'd love to take her family down there, that's because um, if you provide a pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure, that's who you're gonna get. If you provide a car infrastructure, that's what you're gonna get. So we're trying to reimagine in our developments in the downtown to sort of take away that idea that the car is king and start putting pedestrians and bicycles um, more to the forefront. One of the ways you can do that is widen those bike lanes along there, reduce it to two lanes of traffic, and then do what like Windsor did is you, you paint those bike lanes a different color and it really establishes that that's a bike lane. And it, it, it's almost a cue to people who are in cars. It slows them down and it also gives you a space that you feel safe in. Um, it's far better to have a protected bike lane where we had um, separated infrastructure, but maybe that needs to come later, but we should be planning for it now. So when the money comes, that we have the money to put that infrastructure in place and that we're not tearing out a bunch of things that are already there. Obviously widening the sidewalks is always a good thing. Um, and I, I do believe that we need to have ways in which businesses that are coming in there, there isn't a lot of part, there aren't a lot of people parked along there because the businesses aren't there. As this grows and as we expand more downtown housing into those areas, we hope to have more people there, but we hope to have them on bicycles and walking. And so those sidewalks need to widen up so that businesses can spill out onto the sidewalks. If, you know, Dick brought up earlier about Europe, well, that's how Europe does it. You, you look at uh, the Netherlands and you look at areas of Germany and Switzerland and Sweden, and certainly in Denmark, that's how they do it. And they just narrow things down and it does slow the traffic. Um, cars should not be driving through here. Ever since we reunified Courthouse Square, we ended that north-south sort of through fare. So now what you're talking about is just the people who are coming in there to visit businesses. And so I think we need to prioritize pedestrians, we need to prioritize bicycles, and we need to minimize the convenience of cars coming in there. And I think you'll actually, the businesses will actually get more people coming in. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Colin, you're gonna be next and then you're gonna be followed by Monona. Hi, my name is uh, Colin Toma and I am the system change advocate with Display System and Legal Center. Um, our office is actually right on Mendocino, um, so it's a great project to see. Um, so, echoing a lot of the voices, having the protected bike lanes um, is needed if the bike lanes are to be installed. Um, this can give people who use wheelchairs or uh, mobility devices an option um, and saving this dialogue if it's too busy or if there's uh, some sort of obstruction. Um, and then having the vertical parking is also a benefit that can allow for more ADA compliance spaces um, and especially van 
big places in it, big enough vans, um, which is neat in the San Jose uh, area. Um, but that obviously consists of um, biking. And then re-swiping, having um, the crosswalks be high visible, having bold white stripes um, that and that's designed similar to how we have green stripe, the green stripes of bike lanes, so it's easier to see um, pedestrians walking across by motorists, um, and also be good to see uh, by some additional crosswalks. Um, in between the intersection crosswalks to improve access. Um, I know it's not necessarily in the budget for this, but improving the traffic signal, crosswalk signal so they are a bit longer, maybe 15, 20 to 20 seconds um, instead of 10, and having the automatic signals that have the automatic voice. And that probably uh, when it sits across will be a benefit for people's disabilities. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you to Colin. And um, before we move to the next comment, I do want to give an opportunity for Rob to, Rob, if you want to weigh in on uh, any of those uh, traffic signal modifications. Yeah, we could, I'm actually writing that note down right now regarding the times in that area to, to look at them. Um, we do modify our traffic signal timing um, dependent on calls and needs for extended times. So um, if there are specific ones, you could use the app that uh, Bjorn mentioned prior, the My Santa Rosa app, to um, request specific locations um, be reviewed for uh, increased time. Great. Thank you, Rob. All right. Thank you, Monona. We're going to ask you to speak, followed by Chris. Hello, good evening. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you for having this presentation, this forum to hear um, public comments. It's been really interesting hearing everyone's uh, different comments. And um, I agree with most all the speakers who have um, spoken before me um, that there is uh, a vast uh, possibility for improvement of the stretch of Mendocino Avenue. And I'm really happy that the city is looking at uh, making these improvements. Um, I think reducing the vehicular lanes to two lanes and adding uh, bike lanes would be a huge benefit to the community to allow people to bike downtown. Um, I would like to see that the um, intersections and connection to the larger bicycle network in Santa Rosa is considered. Um, I think it was Brad was saying the connection to 7th Street is important. And I do think that's um, critical for cyclists to be able to use the area to make sure that the intersections are well marked and connected to other um, biking infrastructure. Um, it would be uh, great to consider uh, removing parking from one side of the street uh, to allow for more space for bicycles. But if that's not possible, looking at uh, additional traffic calming measures, whether they're raised crosswalks or other things that would really tr calm traffic and make this a more pleasant street for uh, people, and whether they're uh, walking or biking or sitting at one of the, in front of one of the businesses, um, it would be great if there was more um, opportunity for businesses to spill out onto the street in this section. Um, I uh, just wanted to say that I appreciate the buffered bike lanes on E Street and I utilize those to get downtown, uh, but then getting over to the courthouse square is a challenge on a bicycle. And so having this connection to people getting to courthouse square on bicycle would be wonderful. And thinking about bicycle parking, uh, making sure that there's adequate bicycle parking would be um, appreciated. So I just want to thank you for having this forum and um, hope that the that at the that you will think about the third option of adding bike lanes and maybe some things of the fourth option. Um, maybe at some point eliminating some parking spaces, widening sidewalks, 
um, making this it more visually interesting in this area to attract people to um, come downtown and um, frequent multiple businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Winona. Chris, you're going to be our next speaker and then we're gonna follow it with, um, I'll be reading each of the Q&A questions. So go ahead, Chris. Hi there. Um, I just want to say thanks. Um, obviously, this is a really important project. And um, like others, I really appreciate the robust effort to engage with the community around this and have really enjoyed the discussion um, this evening. Uh, I live in the eastern part of the city and I visit downtown frequently, um, including to patronize businesses. I used to work at CoLab, although I'll be honest that one of the reasons I stopped using the space before the pandemic was uh, the difficulty of getting to and from it. Um, and I'm actually looking to um, work downtown again in the near future, ideally. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for ways that I can make that work and especially to, to be able to ride my bike to be able to do it. Um, so uh, not surprisingly, I wanna echo uh, a number of other speakers in expressing support for better bike infrastructure and walkability. I'm actually really disappointed um, that the options that have been presented didn't um, prioritize biking more. I'm sort of baffled by the, the ones that vastly increase parking for a lot of the reasons that, that people have mentioned. And I've, I wanna remind everybody that the city does have stated goals in a number of places, not only to improve infrastructure, but to actually increase the use of that infrastructure for walking and biking. And as, as some have said, you know, the, the lanes that are proposed in the third option here, they're simply not going to be effective. And so nobody's going to ride on them, um, the bike lanes. And, and that's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy because others will look and say, look, nobody rode. They would, they would rather drive. I think we know and we have a lot of research to support uh, that, that we can do better. And so I really support making um, biking a priority, uh, you know, including traffic calming as part of that. But I think then ratcheting up the scale of, of strategies that we can use to make biking lower stress and, and more effective and more accessible um, from painting the lanes green, as, as some have said, but, but more importantly to in introducing buffered lanes. And I don't think that has to be uh, buffered or protected lanes. I don't think that has to be a huge investment or a huge change in the infrastructure. I think that's compatible with the goals of this project as, as many folks have cited. Um, on the connectivity point, you know, I just want to add that downtown is a really key destination. So it's fine to say that Humble is, you know, the key north-south route, except that people want to ride on that route and get downtown. And the reason why is because of the density of, you know, work, education, shopping, entertainment, all the opportunities that exist downtown. And if we say that biking is you know, a secondary priority, or we don't provide multiple routes for people into the core of downtown, then again, we're undermining the opportunity to actually get people to shift out of their cars and onto the streets where they can be more connected to other people, where they can be with their family and their friends and not stuck in a car alone. <laughs> um, and I, I just wanna add, I'm willing to give up parking to realize that vision. I think there was the speaker earlier that cited some really compelling stats. And, and it's my own experience that parking downtown is not hard to find. There are spots on this stretch of road that are frequently empty. And I think anybody who argues the opposite needs to marshal you know, equally compelling, if not more compelling stats. Um, finally, on the parklets question, I love parklets. I love you know, more infrastructure on the street that, that isn't for cars. But I think it's really strange that, that we would make that a priority going forward because those only have come into prominence as an extraordinary measure during the pandemic. There was a really interesting article that I read during the pandemic uh, that highlighted the fact that, you know, these extraordinary measures that we were taking were actually sort of opening up people's thinking about how you know, street spaces and um, buildings and other things maybe could be designed differently to, to meet people's needs better. And I think that's great. So I think we should have the opportunity for, you know, more businesses to have outdoor seating areas, but I don't think we should give up the road for that. And I definitely don't think that that should undermine the ability to realize 
bigger picture goals like improved bike infrastructure, um, improved accessibility uh, that, that are already in the city's plans. And especially because there are only two parklets on the street right now, by my count. And you know, if if people if more businesses didn't jump out to create them in the last two years, then what's the evidence that that's a huge priority going forward? And again, why should that be everybody else's priority? So I would like uh, to be able to use the street um, for connectivity, uh, and I think we can do a much better job. So I'd love to see some some more ambitious options in the next round. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to start with the beginning of the questions. If they've already been answered, we can move on. Uh, first question was, please clarify, parklets, do you mean businesses on the street? Uh, yes, so parklets are um, just uh, basically areas for outdoor seating and dining um, that are located within the parking lane. And there are um, as Chris noted, a, a, a few existing uh, parklets on this stretch of Mendocino Avenue currently. Uh, my top priority not listed in the quiz is to reduce the number of people cruising in cars with modified mufflers to make extra noise. I'll say so noted on that. Okay, next one. Are protected bike lanes a possibility using portable concrete curbs similar to the curbs used in a parking lot? Um, yes, so we, uh, there are several different, uh, basically several different ways that you can create protected bike lanes. Um, some, uh, some cities use uh, flexible hip posts or bollards, some, some uh, cities use par the parking lane as protection, um, some are using curbs. And really it just, what it boils down to is um, there are uh, maintenance impacts associated with each. Um, you have to think about uh, stormwater impacts, street sweeping, um, and you also have to think about the width that's available. And so our, our biggest challenge with getting protected bike lanes um, on this corridor would, again, as I said earlier, we would, we would need to remove parking in one direction to have the width to afford protected bike lanes. Um, protect our, our minimum width for protected bike lanes uh, as directed by Caltrans is seven feet. So that's a five foot bike lane and then a two foot buffer with some form of vertical um, protection in that two foot buffer. And so, as you can see, if you look at the bottom option to get seven feet, um, we would need to, uh, we would need to eliminate um, uh, one side of parking. Thank you. Came in a few minutes late, but I haven't heard anything about the lack of maintenance along the stretch of Mendocino Avenue. Is there going to be more focus on removing weeds, repainting light standards, removing graffiti, et cetera? Um, so yeah, the focus of, of this project is uh, a, it's a slurry, a slurry seal uh, pavement overlay on the roadbed, which is meant to extend the, the life of our, of our roadway surface. Um, and uh, as for the other items, that's that's not a uh, an area of emphasis for this project. But um, if you do see uh, anything that needs maintenance within the public right of way, again, go to srcity.org/mysantarosa and um, report it there. Thank you. I am a business owner on this stretch of Mendocino Avenue. I and my partner strongly advocate for an angled parking. Most businesses on this corridor are not thriving. We need to focus less on cyclists accessing businesses and more about the health of businesses. I am a cyclist for the record. Okay. Uh, this next one, I'm going to uh, ask one of the translators to come back. Um, hold on. Charles, I'm going to read this one in Spanish, if you could translate for us, okay? Yo creo que también es muy importante las luces de los semáforos en la Sonoma. Of hay varios que Juan no las actualizaron, que no tiene flechas para dar vuelta a la is cuerda están muy cerradas donde hay escuelas eso es peligrosa if you could translate that for us mm -hmm. 
Uh, oh, I can read the uh, actual question. Oh, thank you. Fine. Perfect. Okay. No, thank you. Good effort, Shelly. Yo creo que también es muy importante que las veces más en la zona humana hay varios que no se actualizan en la misma fecha. I think that another important, it is, uh, well, something else that's important are the um, lights for the uh, signals uh, on Sonoma Avenue. There are, uh, many of them are not up to date. They don't have arrows to be able to um, turn left. Uh, and they're also very close to schools, which is dangerous. Excellent, thank you. Okay, hi, I've been in Santa Rosa 22 years. Before that, I lived in Boulder. Hola, you in Santa Rosa. Oops, sorry. sorry. Let me take you back off. There you go. Thank you. Hi, I've been in Santa Rosa for 22 years. Before that, I lived in Boulder and Fort Collins, Colorado and Burlington, Vermont. All of those towns offer a great model for our, our town. Specifically, they have walking malls that have no vehicle traffic and are full of people visiting restaurants, cafes, shops, restaurants, and bars. Mendocino Avenue offers exactly this opportunity. Alternatively, make it one way in inbound traffic, or northbound traffic, parking on one side, bike lanes and parklets, make it people friendly. Thank you. Tracy says, I'm a resident of Santa Rosa. My primary mode of transportation is the bicycle. I am hopeful that this section of Mendocino could be transformed to a bike friendly thoroughway. The current street configuration is frustrating and unsafe. My question is, would this project extend to College Avenue? And if so, could the very unsafe current conditions along the southbound direction of Mendocino Avenue crossing college be improved? Southbound Mendocino has two lanes that veers to the right to become Healdsburg Avenue. To stay on Mendocino, a bicyclist has to cross two lanes of traffic. It's scary. Thank you for all your work, Tracy Jones. And Shelly, I'll just um, I'll, I'll address that really quickly. Um, so we are actually looking at that that very issue, um, and uh, we've got a, a concept to um, that that Rob actually and I were just discussing before this meeting. Um, to potentially keep the bike southbound bikes on um, Healdsburg so that they don't have to make that um, that maneuver onto uh, southbound Mendocino. Keep them on Healdsburg until 10th and then give them a two-stage turn at 10th to ride eastbound um, to Mendocino, basically to avoid that whole what happens at that intersection um, southbound. But that's definitely something we want to take a look at and something we will um, uh, likely bring to our uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Board for their um, consideration at some point soon. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hi, is the idea to eliminate cars going through Mendocino coming from College Avenue going into Mendo or eliminate cars going from downtown into Mendocino towards College Avenue? Thank you. So the con none of the concepts shown um, uh, would completely eliminate traffic in either direction on Mendocino. Um, but as, uh, as we mentioned earlier, so there are currently two northbound lanes on Mendocino from fourth to college. And all of our proposals uh, would eliminate one of those two northbound lanes to make the road one lane in each direction, um, given that the traffic volumes uh, on, on this stretch of Mendocino are, are down significantly since the reunification of Courthouse Square. Thank you. Uh, John says, I would like to clarify with protected bike lanes, would there still be parallel parking on one side of the street? This would be great. Convenience for deliveries to the Glass Glazer Center. Uh, so yes, if we were to try to come up with a design that would provide protected bike lanes, uh, there, would, there would still be, we would still be able to provide parking on one side of the street. Um, we could even entertain uh, angled parking on one side of the street, depending on the angle and the width that we take up with the protected bike lane. So um, definitely an option that we can look at. Thank you. Okay, Marisol's question is in Spanish. So again, I'm going to ask Charles to pop out to um, help us translate this one. Y la pregunta es así, me pregunto, ¿por qué no arreglan completa? Charles, 
Charles, can, can you read that question from Marisol? Oh, okay. And so you turn off the Spanish channel in order to have me over here. Is that right? So Pablo I doesn't, I, shouldn't interpret <laughs> during this time. <laughs> I took you out. Correct. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, it says, me pregunto por qué no arreglan completamente las calles, solo las están pintando las rayas, andan rellenando pozos, pero no, pero lo que en realidad se ocupa es cambiar totalmente, renovarla con algo mejor que no se dañe con el agua y el sol. So it says, um, you know, I ask myself, you know, uh, why the streets don't get fixed like completely. Um, they're just, you know, you're just painting them, like you're just painting the lines on them and filling holes. Uh, but in reality, what it, what is needed is a complete renovation, something better that doesn't get damaged by water and sun. Excellent, thank you. Appreciate your help with that. I'm gonna give um, uh, Rob an opportunity to uh, just quickly uh, summarize kind of the city's approach to um, pavement maintenance, since I know he just gave an excellent presentation to the council on this. Great, thanks Bjorn. Um, so without getting too far into the weeds, um, this street is a great, street for us to apply a slurry seal because it is in relatively good condition still. Um, when we have streets that have actually failed and have gone uh, a little bit past the, the stage of degradation that Mendocino has, it's uh, putting a slurry seal on it wouldn't accomplish much. But because Mendocino is still in relatively good condition, a slurry seal will help actually extend the life of this street so and and what the slurry seal does is it does help um, with the oxidation from the sun and with the water penetration into the asphalt that's exactly what it does is it, it helps protect the street from from those elements um, and it's giving us the opportunity to to look at the striping at the same time because we have to remove the striping and then reapply it once it's once the slurry is done Thank you. Um, Brad says, is there room to put the bike lane between the sidewalk and a row of parking, especially on the northbound side? There aren't any driveways on that side of the street. Um, yes, so again, to do so, we would need to um, eliminate uh, parking on one side of the street. Um, we have, uh, so, with, earlier, I mentioned that we're required to provide a minimum of seven feet for protected bike lanes. That actually goes up to eight feet for parking protected bike lanes. The buffer between the bike lane and the parked cars needs to actually be three foot instead of two feet um, for parking protected. So, um, uh, yes, again, uh, something that, that we could do, um, but with elimination of parking on one side of the street. Thank you. Mick. M. Mick says, my concern is the businesses on Mendocino and the lack of availability of enough parking right off College Avenue and Mendocino. There are much more parking getting close to 7th and 5th Street, given the fact there is a parking garage in addition to street parking, but the block between College and Mendo all the way to 7th lacks parking spaces that are enough to support the businesses in that area. And I'll just, yeah, I'll quickly say um, uh, we, looking at the, the existing on-street parking on that section north of 7th Street, um, there are, uh, there, there might be some opportunities to add some parallel parking um, on the southbound side up closer to, um, closer to college. Um, it, I think might be able to fit a couple of spaces in there. Beyond that, can't think of too many opportunities to add much on street parking um, north of 7th, um, unless we were to uh, look at converting some of the existing existing commercial and passenger loading zones to parking, although um, that's, you know, that's another another matter <laughs> that we'd have to look into. <laughs> so, Thank you. Uh, Anonymous says, I think businesses should maintain outdoor seating options. It makes downtown much more fun. And then lastly, we had a previously answered question. The question was, will this slide presentation be available on the project website after this meeting? And the answer was yes at srcity.org forward slash Mendocino Avenue, all one word. Great. Thank you so much, Shelley, um, for all your help with the questions. Um, Lauren, if you're able to go 
advance to um, to slide 19, please. Great, thank you. So seeing uh, no additional hands or questions, uh, I would like to express uh, my appreciation and our appreciation uh, and thank members of the public, uh, panelists, interpreters, and hosts for participating tonight. We really appreciate you taking the time to listen to us and provide your input on Mendocino Avenue. As I mentioned earlier in the meeting, we would also like you to visit the project website listed on your screen to sign up for project updates, um, take our project survey. I don't, Jamie may have actually published that uh, during this meeting. If it's not there, it will be there shortly. And, um, and stay tuned for future updates. So I just got a message from Jamie, the survey is live and we do have the survey available in both English and Spanish. Um, we appreciate your participation in tonight's meeting. And, um, and with that, I think we're ready to wrap up the meeting. So I'll, I'll say good night.